Hello everyone, I'm Professor Plink. I respond to various theological and ideological questions and claims from a rationalistic and naturalistic approach in an effort to give and explain the opposite viewpoint and help to balance the conversation. Today is a quick response where we look at a short video from a guy called Fabian Wolting, and he's claiming that whether or not God exists is actually irrelevant. But instead, it's just believing in God that matters. Well, I can already tell I'm going to have some disagreements with this line of thinking, but let's let him get things started with his argument. So, take it away, Fabian. There are millions of videos on YouTube about the existence of God. Do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? It's a question humans have asked themselves for decades. Did you believe in God? But what if that question doesn't really matter? It seems like such an important question, but what if the existence of a God doesn't matter, but the existence of a belief in God is what really matters? It seems to me that whether or not God exists is a critically important question. Because if God does exist, then that impacts virtually everything. That knowledge would impact what we think about how we should behave, what our place in the universe is, the very nature of existence itself. Basically, a rock-solid knowledge of the existence of God would put to bed every philosophical question we could ever have. On the other hand, knowing for a fact that God doesn't exist would also be totally world-changing. People would stop following false religions that lead them to do a variety of things that are harmful to themselves and others, like passing legislation that forces religious mandates on people, or maligning others as bad people for apostasy or simply being the wrong religion because they aren't a part of their own religion. I can't imagine how whether or not God exists actually doesn't matter. But I must say, I am intrigued how a person could reach that conclusion. So carry on, explain yourself. Let me explain. In order to fully understand the statement, the existence of a God doesn't really matter, but the belief in the existence of a God matters, we first need to understand why humans even believe in a God. This definitely isn't the only reason, but it's one crucially important for this topic. When things are going extremely bad in your life and you have no one to talk to, you just imagine that there is some greater being that's listening to you, that's there for you. And that's not to say that there is no God, I just think that when you're praying, you believe that there is some greater creature that gives you power and that's there for you. Well, there are many reasons why people believe in a god or gods. One might be for comfort in bad times, sure, but that certainly isn't the entirety of reasons for god belief. I wouldn't even say it's the most prominent. Most often, god belief comes from indoctrination. A person's parents or family instills a belief in god from an early age, not just in God, but in the truthfulness of a particular religion, and that religious belief then forms a core, foundational part of the person's identity as they grow older. So it becomes very, very difficult to detach from it, because losing that religion feels as though you're losing a critical part of who you are. So much so that most people won't even attempt to do it, even if they find their faith waning at some point. And it doesn't have to be strictly familial indoctrination to lead to a God belief. It can also come from one's education. It can come from one's overarching culture, if they're raised in a heavily religious country. Or it can come from a variety of subcultures that one finds themselves a part of. For instance, if someone is raised in a Catholic orphanage, or practically anywhere in Utah, there are several other reasons for having a God belief. Personal incredulity at scientific explanations for the universe. Fear of death being the end of individual existence, either for oneself or loved ones who have passed away before them. It can be horrifying to think about a beloved relative who has died being well and truly gone. There's the general uncomfortability humans have always had with the unknown. If they can believe in an all-powerful magical being who can do anything, then they have a catch-all explanation for literally everything. Then they don't have to fear what they don't understand, because the big man in the sky has it all under control. Basically, there are tons of reasons why people believe in a god or gods. But let's get on to the explanation of why those beliefs being true or false 
doesn't really matter. If you want to receive that power to stick through harder times from that creature from above, it doesn't really matter if there actually is a god or not. It doesn't really matter if god really created the earth in seven days and really shaped the human out of dirt, which we both know is kind of not really true. I believe that the mere belief in a god generates its power. And there are two reasons for that. Reason number one is that I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're praying and you, you think someone's up there and someone's giving you energy, someone's caring about you, that itself generates the power we think comes from above. What the hell are you talking about? Prayers produce power, even if there's no god that actually exists to underpin it? This seems like the exact opposite of how it's supposed to work. If a god exists and you pray to them, then they have the ability to answer your prayers. And thus, though the power is coming from that god, ultimately, they were motivated to use that power by your prayers. So you could say that there's power in prayer in that case. But if there's no god to listen to you and act upon your prayers, then there's no power to them. If you pray for your cancer to go away and there's no god listening, guess what? your prayer will have no effect whatsoever on your cancer. The only benefit to prayer in a godless universe is a psychological one where a person can reduce their stress or negative thoughts by praying and believing that their prayer will yield positive outcomes. But that's basically a glorified placebo effect. And when people choose prayer over actual medical treatment, the end results are usually quite bad. But let's go beyond the medical. Are you saying prayer to win the lottery increases your chances of winning the lottery? That prayer for a promotion at work will increase your chances of getting that promotion? That prayer to have a boy when you're pregnant will affect the odds of actually having a boy? Because without a god, all of this is simply wishful thinking which would have no bearing whatsoever on the physical universe. Unless you're claiming that human beings possess some kind of superpower of mentally directing real, supernatural energy with the power of their minds through prayer. What does the scouter say about his power level? It's over 9,000! Look, if there is no God, the only power prayer has is the power to make you feel better. And if you want to console yourself with self-deception, go right ahead. But if you're hoping your prayer will help you come home rich from your trip to Vegas or dissolve that brain tumor, well, you're going to be disappointed. And again, as I said, that's not to say that there is no God. We can't prove it right or wrong. I just think that even if there is no God, the belief in a God can itself be very powerful. And reason number two, it makes you do the right thing. If you believe there is a higher entity watching you, you're more likely to do the right thing. Are you fucking kidding me? Motherfucker, are you out of your damn mind? You cannot possibly be this naive. The litany of horrible things that people have done in the name of religion is far too long and heartbreaking to go all the way through here. After all, I'm not trying to make a five-hour-long video detailing religious atrocities, even though that amount of time would barely scratch the surface. But the very idea that believing that there is a god watching you is primarily going to motivate you to do good things is such a simplistic, childish way of looking at actions motivated by faith. People have always rationalized doing the things that they want to do that are detrimental to others by believing that their God actually supports them and wants them to do those things. That they're righteous in their actions. And when they don't know what to do at all, when they don't have an intense desire to do harmful actions, they often find themselves racked with fear about what their God wishes of them and an effort to appease that god will glom on to bad things that they don't actually want to do, but convince themselves that they must in order to fulfill the desires of the god they so wish to appease. Nothing is beyond your power. You are the overseer. I will prove it. Let go! Let Father, no! 
As Steven Weinberg said, With or without religion, you would have good people doing good things, and evil people doing evil things. But for good people to do evil things, that takes religion. And that was Fabian's last point, and it was a doozy of an awful one. But in summation, if a god actually exists, that is a monumentally important thing to know. And if he doesn't exist, that is also critically important. Belief for the sake of believing is delusion. If you want to claim that having faith can lead to more positive outcomes in life, as can be attributed to being part of a religious community and fostering camaraderie, giving someone a built-in social support network and the like, you could have made that argument. But you didn't. If you want to claim that religion can strengthen a nation by giving it a moral framework to guide its social and legal makeup, provide cultural stability and the like, you could have made that argument. But you didn't. The arguments put forth amounted to prayer by itself generates power, which, if there is no God, no it doesn't, and faith in a God makes people do good things, which history has conclusively shown us, no, it doesn't. As a final note, Fabian has a small channel, so I'm not trying to beat up on him too badly. But this notion is just really naive and silly. If you need to put your faith in something, there are plenty of tangible things here in the real world that one could put their faith in. Family, friends, humanism, the forward progress of mankind, science, physics, mathematics, or one's own sense of right and wrong. One does not need to appeal to mysticism and superstition to gain whatever ancillary benefits may come by way of belief in something. And if you're putting your faith into something that demands adherence to a complex system of rules, prohibitions, directives, and punishments for failing to live up to it, and that thing turns out to not be real, then you are severely curtailing the one life you have in a futile pursuit of righteousness that is ultimately nothing more than a fantasy. And that, my friend, is a sad and sorry waste. So that is where we'll leave things for today. So thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to like this video, comment, and subscribe so you'll always be notified when a new video comes out. Until next time, I'm Professor Plink reminding you to keep striving for greater understanding. It's the best way to get wherever you want to go.